What's up everyone? This is video number two for section 6.1. Primary focus in this video is going to be on radian measure for an angle. Let's first talk about a central angle though. This is a positive angle whose vertex is positioned at the center of a circle. When you have a central angle, the rays of that angle are going to subtend or intersect an arc on the circle. And this is going to lead us to the concept of a radian. A radian is a dimensionless unit for measuring angles. And what's in red here on your screen is extremely important. One radian is said to represent the measure of an angle created by wrapping the radius of the circle around the circle one time. Okay, so focus on the uh, circle that's on the left side of your screen right now. Okay, um, notice that circle is said to have a radius of r. Okay. So if I take the length of that radius r and I wrap that around the edge of the circle and then subtend that with a central angle, that angle is said to have a measure of one radian. Okay. Now look at the uh, uh, second circle that's over on the right hand side. It's actually a circle within a circle. Okay. Um, this definition for a radian, it shows us that it's not dependent upon the length of the radius itself. Um, it's just dependent upon uh, the size of the angle. It's just dependent upon how many times that radius can be wrapped around the edge of the circle. Okay. So notice the smaller circle here. It has a radius of one unit. And when I wrap that length of one unit around the edge and then subtend that with a central angle, that angle is said to be one radian, okay? And then look at the larger circle. It has a radius of three units. If I wrap that around the edge of the circle and then subtend that with a central angle, notice it's the exact same angle. It has one radian measure, just like the angle did for the, uh, that was subtending the smaller circle, okay? Now let's look at a dy dynamic illustration of this. All right, so right here, I'm, I'm going to be creating an angle by rotating the terminal side of the angle um, through the coordinate plane counterclockwise, okay? And as I rotate that angle, you're going to see um, an arc that's going to be created, um, and one full rotation will create a circle, right? Um, also notice that the initial side of this angle it's said to be two units, which is going to be like the radius of the circle that's going to be created here, okay? So as I increase the size of this angle, when that arc gets to be exactly two units, I'm, I now have an angle that's said to be one radian, okay? If I go another two units, there's a second radian. So this angle is two radians in measure. This angle would be three radians in measure, four radians in measure, five, six, and then notice I can't get to a seventh radian in measure without completing a full revolution. Okay, so this is showing me that there's a little bit more than six radians in one full rotation or one full revolution, okay? And um, notice that, again, it's this is not dependent upon the length of the radius itself. I can increase or decrease this radius, and I'm still going to wind up with the same amount of radians as I complete my one full revolution, okay? All right, so you've worked with radians before. You have a little experience with these already. We know that there's two pi radians in every 360 degrees or one revolution, right? And two pi is approximately 6.28, which is exactly what we just saw in that dynamic illustration. It's that I can um, take the radius of my circle and wrap it around approximately 6.28 times. Okay, now that um, that means that one radian can be thought of as 
360 degrees over 2 pi, which reduces to 180 over pi, which is approximately 57 degrees. Okay, so what that's saying is that when I take the radius of my circle and wrap it around one time and then uh, create a central angle off of that arc, that's going to be approximately a 57 degree angle. Okay, what about one degree? Well, that's equivalent to 2 pi radians over 360, which reduces to pi over 180 which is approximately 0 0.017 radians. Okay, so what that's saying is that um, if you take 0 0.017 uh, 17, uh, units worth of your radius and wrap it around the edge of your circle, it's going to create one degree. Okay, let's work on converting between degree and uh, radian measure. 25 degrees, if I want to convert that to radians, I'm going to multiply that by a conversion fraction of pi over 180 degrees. And that's going to allow the units of degrees to reduce away. And this will lead me to 25 pi over 180, which can reduce and be kept in terms of pi as 5 pi over 36. So it's very common to, to leave our radians in an exact form like this in terms of pi. Now, if you want to have a more concrete idea of exactly what this represents, 5 pi divided by 36 is approximately 0 0.436 radians. Okay, so this is just stating that um, in order to create a 25 degree angle, I would need to wrap um, 0 0.436 units worth of my radius around the edge of the circle um, and then subtend that with, with a central angle. Okay, let's go in the other direction. 2.75 radians, if I want to convert that to degrees, I'm going to multiply that by a conversion fraction of 180 over pi. That's going to multiply out to 495 over pi. And if I divide that out, that's approximately 157.6 degrees. Okay. So what that's stating is that if you were to take the radius of your circle and wrap it 2.75 times around the circle and then subtend that with the central angle, you will have a 157.6 degree angle. Okay. Now, some special angle measures that you're going to want to memorize. 30 degrees, very special angle. It's equivalent to pi over 6 radians. 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3 radians. 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4 radians. And 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2 radians. Okay? Knowing the conversions between the degree and radian form of these special angle measures can be very helpful in converting other angles from radians to degrees, okay? So here's what I mean by that. If I wanna take two pi over three and convert that to degrees, one option I have is to multiply that by 180 over pi and then you know do the, do the reducing, okay? or a bit of a short shortcut, you could think of 2 pi over 3 as 2 times pi over 3. And if you know that pi over 3 is equivalent to 60 degrees, you can just multiply 2 by 60, and that gives you 120 degrees. Okay? Negative 5 pi over 6, that can be thought of as negative 5 times pi over 6. And if you know that pi over 6 is equivalent to 30 degrees. Negative 5 times 30 will give you negative 150 degrees. So knowing these special angle measures will make your conversions much quicker. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about some special angles. Okay. Um, Co-terminal, or I'm sorry, uh, quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles 
would be angles whose terminal ray is along an axis. Okay, it can be any axis, uh, the x-axis or the y-axis. Okay, so uh, what you see pictured at the top of your screen, that's that's a 270 degree angle, and that would be quadrantal since the terminal side is on the negative y-axis. Okay. Um, now, quadrantal angles, they're always going to have to be a multiple of 90 degrees or pi over 2, okay? So that's important. Now, coterminal angles, we already briefly discussed in the, in the previous video. These are going to be two angles that when in standard position, they share a terminal ray, okay? So notice that 45 degrees and negative 315 degrees they both have the same terminal side to their angle, so they would be considered coterminal. Okay. Now, in order to find a coterminal angle to any given angle, all you have to do is add or subtract a multiple of 2 pi or a multiple of 360 degrees from your angle. All right. So if I wanted to find a coterminal angle to pi over 6, one thing I could do is just take pi over 6, and I could add it with 2 pi, okay? That's going to give me uh, pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 if I want a common denominator, and that ultimately will lead me to 13 pi over 6. So 13 pi over 6 is a coterminal angle to pi over 6. Um, or you could have taken pi over 6 and subtracted 2 pi from it. So pi over 6 minus 2 pi is the same as pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6, and that's negative 11 pi over 6. Okay. Um, understand there are an infinite amount of coterminal angles to pi over 6, though, because you can add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi. I could have uh, added 4 pi or 6 pi or 8 pi. Okay, just it just uh, depends on you know how many rotations you want to go from the terminal side of your original angle to get to that coterminal angle. Okay, all right. Now it's your turn to practice. Um, pause the video here. Work through the practice problems on the next uh, sheet, and then check your work with mine.